Jenny it's Angela Ardolino with Your Natural Dog and my guest today is Susie Seren and she's from Zumaca which used to be called Homeo Animal and she's a homeopath and she's a co-founder of this wonderful company that makes um, all natural homeopathic um, and herbal formulations for just about everything you can think of that ails our pets. Um, it is a wonderful company, wonderful products. We're going to have a wonderful, we have such a wonderful conversation about um, ears. I oh no, we concentrate on eyes, mouth, nose, breathing. What are the, some of the best things that she likes for that? And we also talk about um, what kind of bullshit the FDA pulls on small natural companies like us and why it's so hard to get an all natural product out on the marketplace and then be able to educate and tell people about it and why it works. And these are herbs and homeopathic remedies that have been used for thousands and thousands of years and they work. Remember, every pharmaceutical drug that's out there is derived from something found in nature. So let's find those natural things instead. Here it is. My conversation with Susie. Introducing Mycodog, a line of mushroom extracts combined with adaptogens like ashwagandha, astragalus root, and bacopa muniri, made specifically for dogs. The mushrooms in our tinctures are grown in the wild in the Pacific Northwest and are triple extracted from the fruiting bodies of the mushrooms. These tinctures are meant to support dogs with dementia and canine cognitive disorder breathing and respiratory issues, and autoimmune diseases, and even cancer. Click on the link below to learn more about how Mycodog can help your dog live their very best life naturally. Hey everybody, we're back with Susie uh, Saren from Zoom. I see you have too many tongue ties that I, that I can't <laughs> say all at once. So the name of you, you, you were homeo animal, and now yes. you are Zumaka. Mm -hmm. What does That's that mean? It. I know it's got a meaning. <laughs> um, it, so the meaning basically, first of all, just to um, uh, explain, homeo animal, we decided was um, very too niche oriented. We have a lot of homeopathy. That's how it started. And we still love and are definitely advocates for homeopathy. But then we're starting to add some supplements, some mushrooms and things like that. So we just decided we needed something that would fit the brand a little more. Um, so we went with Zumaka. We actually did um, a contest within our, our um or the team would just say, Hey, uh -huh. why don't, you know, it's good for the culture. Just propose some names. And, uh, it's crazy when you go and try to find a company name, how much it becomes harder than you think. So, yeah. um, and then one of our, um, our, our team members, she speaks Swahili. Uh, so which is a, a, an African language, uh, from like the East side of Africa. Um, and then, um, so then, and then she just wanted to do something exciting and fun. So then zoo for, for like the animal, uh, side of things. And then Maka means queen. So, um, in Swahili. So we just thought it was fun. Uh, so oh, we went, I like, like it. Yeah, why not? Zoo yeah, queen. So that's it. <laughs> the, zoo, the zoo queen is on with the cannabis queen <laughs> in the animal world. I love it. It's exactly. <laughs> well, I love, um, I love the videos that you've produced on YouTube. So educational. You. Um, I love what you do. And I wanted to talk to you about, um, you know, wanted to kind of concentrate on ear, nose, mouth, natural remedies, because I feel like there is definitely a hole in the market and it's, yep. and you have filled it and I love it and I love your products. And I want to talk about some of those because, um, there, I have a lot of old dogs, a lot of seniors and geriatrics. And that's usually when those types of problems start coming to mm -hmm. really showing their ugly head. Um, yep. so I, I also, <laughs> I also want to tell you a little story about what I'm going through right now, just because yep. I have really been concentrating on how much the things that we're suffering from in the human side of things and the health industry, it's even worse in the animal industry. But I uh, was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis in 2015. That's how I discovered cannabis medicine. That's what I used to control my inflammation and the disease. Um, but I would get, how I discovered it is that I would flare up in my eye. So I went to the eye doctor and it was actually my eye doctor who said, I think you have rheumatoid arthritis. You should go get tested for it. The problem is, 
is that every time I had a flare up, I was given these little drops. It was a bottle that's this big, $50, I think, for that little thing wow. um, to put in my eye. And they were steroid drops. And I literally, this is from, I was diagnosed in 2015. So we're talking six years, like, is that six years? Something like that? <laughs> six, seven years? So, <laughs> um, so I would say in the beginning until I really figured out everything, I probably used, I would have like five flare-ups. Now for the past two years, I've had like one flare-up. So just letting people know how I didn't use these drops very often. And they gave me a cataract. That's crazy. I have a cataract. Gosh. So I only know this because I went to another eye doctor who said, oh, my God, do not use those drops. And, of course, she was more yeah. of a holistic <laughs> type doctor. Mm -hmm. She goes, they cause this, they cause that, you know, don't do it or whatever. And literally went back to my other doctor and said, like right now. And I go, I can't believe I'm sitting in the do same place because they're the best in cataract surgery. I am giving you five over $5,000 to replace the lens in my eye from the medicine that you prescribed and gave to me that you know causes cataracts, which was kind of the basis of my whole event that I just did do no harm. We have gotten away yeah. from that. What? Get yeah. rid of, there's nothing else? So let's talk about just inflammation in the eye. We'll start there. Um, mm -hmm. And I know it. I. I don't know if you know, I have a groom shop. So I see the Shih Tzus with the terrible eyes. I see Shih Tzus all the time with the, with the cataracts yeah. and eye issues. Um, yeah. What are some of your favorite natural alternatives uh, to some of these harsh meds that people can do for their old pets in their eyes? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, first of all, we see so many side effects from medication uh, uh, on a regular basis. It's crazy. Um, we see horrible things, eye issues, um, uh, seizures and skin issues. It, it's crazy. But um, to go back to the eye issues, uh, of course, uh, I usually tend to go more towards the homeopathy route. The first uh, time, first thing I'll do is that um, there are various of uh, remedies you can use in homeopathy. And what I love about homeopathy is you can really get down into the itsy bitsy details of uh, a pet's issue. Um, for example, uh, let's say it's just a, a cataract that's beginning, then it will not be necessarily the same remedy if it's uh, a cataract that's a little bit, has progressed a little bit more. So for example, if a uh, a pet is just starting to get cataracts, a really good remedy for that in homeopathy is natrum muir, uh, which is a fancy Latin name for your common table salt, actually. Um, really? But of course, yeah, yeah, there are so many Latin names uh, that we use, and they're actually the stuff you probably have in your kitchen. So, um, But once it's uh, gone through the whole homeopathic dilution and all of that, it just becomes great and awesome so beneficial so for example this nature mirror uh is excellent for cataracts that begin to develop at an initial stage um but if you have a cataract already and it's just progressing then sometime you'll just go with something else like uh causticum which is uh can slow down the the progression considerably uh we've i, I don't want to say we've reverse some cataracts sometimes, but we can like really wow. almost stop it. It's crazy. We've seen the crazy stuff. So there are a lot of things for sure in homeopathy you can give, but I know there are a lot of herbs too. Um, I, you've probably heard of it, the bilberry extract, uh, also co called as, um, as the vision herb um, that a lot of the people, the pet owners I talk to usually use that and you can use them together. It's fine. Um, it's definitely, uh, another good, um, plant you can use, uh, that has great active ingredients, uh, for eye health and vision, lots of antioxidants too, which are important for the eye health, but also for uh, just overall health for, for sure. And these are things that they don't, act, you don't actually put in the eye. you you take them internally, the dog, you would give it to your dog internally. Yeah, exactly. For, um, well, for the homeopathy, um, usually, I, I go, I love liquids just because it goes directly into the mucus I tissue. I do too. I do yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> so, and that's great. Um, and usually what I'll do, you can spray it in the mouth, but not, not many pests love that. Um, so we usually just recommend to spray the remedy in uh, water 
and then they just drink up their water during the day. They have no clue they're taking something. So I, I personally love that. You have homeopathy you can actually buy from the store, like in little granules, uh, and you just right. put those in water. And same thing, you just let them drink that. So uh, that's another great thing. It's tasteless, so that's great. For the herbs, usually you can just take the powder extract and either mix it with food or other things like that. So, so when, yeah. it's in it, when, it's, when it's in its dry form versus liquid form, is one more bioavailable? Because like in cannabis and in mushrooms it is. Um, but is it the same way with herbs? Because I see a lot of, of new products coming out that are dried herbs, like a combination yeah. of dried herbs. So I'm like, kind of like how mushrooms are, mm -hmm. how yeah. people are, are grinding up the entire substrate with the uh, mm -hmm. everything and calling it a mushroom tincture and they're not extracting yeah. any of the compounds. So what yeah. is the difference? Because I... I feel like that there's a rise in a lot of these dried herbs because, of course, I want the I want the listeners to understand it's a lot easier to throw a bunch of dried herbs in a package than it is to extract the medicinal compounds out of that plant. Yeah, that's such a great question. Um, I'll be very honest. I prefer the liquids <laughs> just right. because, for the same reason I said, it just go direct. It goes directly in your system. It's it's uh, it gets absorbed. It, it gets absorbed much more easily. But it doesn't mean that the powders aren't good, but you just have to stay informed because uh, you have those powders that they just mash up everything and just put it in a capsule. And then you have the actual extracts that right. they'll uh, just form into a powder, but it's still good. And um, you're talking so about I think, mushrooms right now, right? Yeah, exactly. For, for mushrooms, like for instance, for example, if you uh, one of the herbs that you mentioned for the eyes is that you're taking the extraction from that herb or is it the herb just ground up? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, for herbs, you have a, a lot of extractions uh, done. So, but again, you have to stay informed because companies are very different. So you have to make sure the extractions are always the best way to go just because that's where your properties uh, are really really are there so um well it's similar to to the mushrooms i would say um it, right. you need so to get you, that quality right so if you were to what well, what well, i'm trying the point i'm trying to you know hammer home here is that taking a supplement or an herb or a mushroom that is just ground up is not as effective as extracting no. the medicinal compounds out of that herb and then that can be, and I'm also dried, they freeze dried and it becomes a powder or it goes into a tincture. So yes. I just want people to be aware of these herbs and things that they're seeing that are, that are out there dry. Now, you could take a dried crushed up mushroom and then you can do an extraction yourself um, and possibly even do it with cannabis and other herbs. I wouldn't do it, mm -hmm. but I leave it to you. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I'm sure your process, your professional process is a lot better than someone doing it in their kitchen. But um, mm -hmm. how about mouth? I mean, when I look at my old dog's mouth, I get to a certain point, I have a 16 year old. I'm not taking him in to get a dental. <laughs> He's not being put under. Mm -hmm. he, actually, I haven't yes. done a dental since he was 10. Um, and there is some, there's some messes in there, but I do a lot to fight off everything. What are some of your suggestions on mouth and keeping the mouth clean and healthy? I, I even saw that you had something that addresses gums. Yes. Oh my, I like the mouth subject. I love, there are so many great things we can do for that. And that doesn't, we don't need to go to the vet for or a cleaning as a last resort. You can, if there's so much like tartar accumulation or things like that. But I actually went to the vet, uh, last year, my dog was seven. I was like, maybe he'll need a dental cleaning. I saw a little bit of tartar. I'm just like, I'll be a good mom and do my vet right. visits. And, but I still give him the natural stuff, you know? So I go there pay for the visit. And then the vet, all he says is like, he doesn't need a dental cleaning. Yay! And then I just went back home. I was like, Ooh, I'm so excited. This like the, the natural stuff really works. So I, I got to live it myself. So, um, one thing I, I find, um, that really is good to mention is that pet owners come to me a lot of the times and they'll come back from the vet saying he, the, the vet said he has gingivitis, which is true. But there's a difference between gingivitis and tartar. 
so and a lot of the times i feel like some people and that's okay we're not informed so uh there is a, a big difference so the gingivitis is usually a term that we'll use for everything but the gingivitis is actually actually just the inflammation of the gums but that's usually caused by the tartar accumulation so what we see on the teeth the yellowish brownish deposits that's full of bacteria and that's we naturally make some our pets naturally make some it's in our system it's in our saliva um but if we don't remove that then um that will create uh, the bacteria will trigger the gums and cause inflammation so um so that's why we try it's good to know that because the the products you'll use will not necessarily be the same so um usually when people say, oh, there's a lot of tartar accumulation and we can confirm that, then there's this awesome product in homeopathy, the ingredient being mesoreum, which is a flowering plant, and it helps dissolve the tartar. That's a wonderful product. I love it and it works. Uh, you have to be patient. You have to give it on an ongoing basis, but it does wonders. And for the gums, there are a lot of when it's just inflammation of the gums and it, the gums are bleeding, they're inflamed. Um, there are a bunch of remedies you can use for that. There is mercurius soul. Uh, that's one of the top remedies uh, for inflammation of the gums, especially uh, the gums are painful, like spongy, swollen. Um, you also have um, carbo veg which is uh, effective, especially when you're brushing your, your, your dog's teeth, for example, and you see some bleeding, uh, maybe the, there's a bad smell uh, coming out. Maybe he has some, it's painful when he's chewing. That's another great remedy. I mean, it's infinite. Almost there's so many remedies. We, we and I can't, I love that you said pain while chewing. I can't tell yeah. you how many people think that their dog no longer likes the food or something else um, is wrong when it's a tooth issue that's literally yeah. doing it, which I, want, I, I have a house full of old dogs some very old ones mm -hmm. and really what I'll do to even like figure out if that's the issue is I will put full spectrum hemp extract all over their gums and then go, Oh, <laughs> they ate their whole bowl of food. That means there's a tooth somewhere in there that's bothering them. Yeah, um, so that's, that's when I was true. like, okay, got to go address that. Something's going on with that <laughs> tooth. Um, yeah. The other thing and why I love that I get to talk to you about this is breathing issues. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like, I've known people who have put their dogs down thinking, oh my God, he's struggling, he's hurting, he's having trouble breathing. And it's just an old dog, hacking, coughing, you know, all the things that old people noises make, dogs have their own versions of them. But what are yeah. some what are some things that can help support their um, breathing? I know I'm a big fan of mushrooms. I just came out with a mushroom <laughs> tincture, two of them just for my oldest dog to support his breathing and cardiovascular, but what else uh, helps? Um, that's a good question. Um, so I'm trying to think of something. I am, um, there, you have your regular homeopathy, um, like I talked about, but you also have something called cell salts um, in homeopathy, which mm -hmm. are great. They're, they're the tissue salts. Um, so, and they're homeopathic too, but in a lower dilution, they usually come in, uh, uh, in little tablets that dissolve very easily in water. And those are wonderful for breathing issues. Um, they're basically And you put them in water? Yeah. You put you it in put their in water, water or you put it in water either. and just give it to them? You, either is good. You can usually, I prefer to just a little bit of water. Uh, you put them in, let them dissolve. I even put sometimes some like chicken broth or something to make them, uh, to make the dogs, uh, you know, lick it up really quick, make sure we don't lose any of the other products. So um, so you have a, a variety uh, of cell salts you can use for that. They're usually numbered from one to 12. Um, it is this, or they're also known as Schussler salts. Uh, it's this guy, one day he figured that our body is composed of 12 salts. And usually when we lack one of those salts, um, it, if we take, we, it'll cause a disease or an issue or a symptom. And when we regain back that, uh, that salt in our body, then it'll solve that issue. So for coughing, we have a, a lot of those salts. Uh, I, I'd have to go back. I don't know all, them all by heart, right? I know them because they're numbered one to 12. I know it's number four, five, seven, and I could, I could get you a list of that, but they're, they're wonderful for, for coughing and breathing issues. We get really good results with those. Yeah, I've never used them, but I know all about them. So I mm. will be very excited oh. to try them and see how they work. Yeah, they're my go-to. <laughs> awesome. Too. 
I think one of the, the biggest questions I get or the confusion I get from a lot of pet parents is that they don't understand if all of this works so well, it is so good, then why is it so hard? Like, why do I have to invite you on my podcast and tell everybody about this? Why isn't this <laughs> stuff that we can easily find or go to a, uh, even our dog's pet shop and buy or a drugstore and buy? Um, and I know why, but I, I think it's great to talk to someone else who um, I'm in cannabis and now mushrooms, yeah. and you have, of course, interested in plants and mushrooms and have been working with them for so long. Um, and I want to talk about it. So mm -hmm. um, I don't think that people understand what we have to go to through to bring yeah. these all natural products to the marketplace and then educate and talk about them to the public. Um, and yeah. the reason I bring this up is because I know people are going to Google you and yep. they're going to Google and they're going to see that there's a letter from the FDA um, mm -hmm. that basically, well, I'll let you explain. Um, I've gotten uh, these letters. Uh, I okay. can't remember if I got one from the FDA yet. I probably mm -hmm. would have been like, yeah, I got one from the FDA. <laughs> but but um, it's basically, I'll let you explain what the warning letter that you got um, for selling all natural products. That is uh, definitely a very good point to bring up. I'm happy we're talking about it today. I think we definitely have to be transparent about it because um, the FDA, and I'm here in Canada, so Health Canada is similar, um, there, it's very regulated in a way that it is not in Europe, um, in India and other parts of the world, especially in, I'm saying India because of homeopathy is very popular there, but um, it's definitely something that, that is highly regulated and I'm learning, you know, you want to learn the rules of the game, but they're not clear. It's like, here's the game, play it. There are some rules. We're not really going to tell you what they are. Have fun. Right. <laughs> and then they'll punish you if you didn't respect the rules. But so you have to be very aware. Um, so some of those rules are actually that you have to be careful about the claims that you make because there are those, um, big pharmaceutical companies out there and they have to protect them and they want to make sure they, they keep their place. Um, so there are some claims that are really dedicated to the drugs, only the conventional drugs. So, um, for example, if I cannot, uh, we, we cannot talk about a disease name. Uh, we're not allowed to mention that. Even with the symptoms, we have to be careful. And that's what the letter was about. They they came to us and told us, no, you cannot claim that this helps with cancer. You cannot claim this helps with anemia. So we're like, okay, well, what can we say? Well, it supports the overall system. Well, that's fine, but I can't say that for all of my products, right? So I was in shock. It took me a while. That was last year, but I'm like, hey, uh, like, it's not about my company. It's about putting the information out there, educating those pet parents. They deserve to know. They deserve to have other options. So I just decided to fight and to continue. And so basically, um, and the thing is with the claims is that what I did not understand, and up to this day I do not, is in homeopathy, like our books, it there's case studies and after case studies and saying like all these things yeah it does help with all of these illnesses with cancer and so what am I supposed to say I mean it's true I mean it's a medical book it's you know so I so yeah that so that's what it is uh there are some certain claims that, that the FDA does not allow us to say and that's that's what it is which um, makes no that. sense at all um we're in the yeah. same boat here yeah. uh those of you who have used the heel tincture you'll use to say cancer and autoimmune diseases uh, yeah. i can't remember took that off um but yeah we literally can't do it yet the fda allows drugs to be in the marketplace that have not been proven to work yeah. and they apply uh to to get approval from the fda the fda doesn't even have the staff to go through it so they legally allow these drugs to be sold in the marketplace um, what do they call them? Uh, not approved by the FDA, but legally allowed to be uh, marketed. Uh, yeah, marketed yeah. in the marketplace, like advertisement, put it out there, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but not our natural products. 
Mm -hmm. I'm not even allowed. Cannabis is not even recognized as a generally recognized safe product. So we can't even, uh, they don't even allow us to even apply, (laughs) Mm -hmm. much less than anything. So literally big pharma, these big hospitals all control the FDA. Most of them end up working for the FDA and then sitting on their boards. Um, This is a known fact. This is why we just did this event. And these natural remedies are going to continue to be kept from us. And then other organizations move in. You know, we we have the animals version of the FDA, the NASC, who's trying to control the marketplace, who does not do anything. They don't test products or require research. So they're literally just making sure that the ingredients that are in the product are safe, but they don't make sure that they're effective. We follow, and I'm sure you follow your association, but we follow the hemp industry what their Mm -hmm. guidelines are. So that's why we go and put our QR codes on that go to our COAs and follow the industry. So I'm sure you follow homeopathy's industry standards and what, how it's, how medicine is supposed to be made. So I think that there's going to be a switch where more and more people are going to see that a, these uh, pharmaceuticals do not help their pets. Most of them aren't even made to help their pets. Um, and that are going to ser- search out for holistic remedies. And I just want to thank you for keeping up the good work and not letting them scare you away. Because I'll tell you guys, this is not an easy job mm-hmm. to do the right thing. We get it from every side, every day, whether it's the internet telling us we can't say something or the FDA. Yeah. <laughs> and we literally make things that mm-hmm. do no harm. They only help. Exactly. Well said. I'm glad it I'm glad it didn't deter you from what you're doing. And I didn't even know you were in Canada. So you must have been like, what is what is this bullshit? (laughs) Well, thank you so much um, for joining me today. Where can people follow you? And I'm sure people are gonna want to be able to speak to you. I know you have um, don't you have a medical director or a vet on staff? Like can people get consultations? Because actually your website is very clear. You make it very easy Thank to you. go, here's the problem, here's what I want. So I want to applaud you on that. But if someone does want more information on anything that you spoke about today, where can they find you? Absolutely. Our website is, uh, we, we have a homeopath on site that we're ready to do consultations. We awesome. have a lot of, of vets that are our customers. So we're, and we're actually looking to work more with vets, holistic vets to, you know, as a community, we want to help one another. So uh, just go online, you can book a consultation. And uh, if you want to reach me personally, uh, my personal email, I, that's fine with me, Susie at Zamalka.com. I'll be more than happy to, to help you. And if awesome. needed, I'll redirect you. <laughs> awesome. And, uh, and the website is Z-U-M-A-L-K-A.com. Exactly. Susie. Thank you so much for joining me today. It was awesome. And we're definitely going to need to get on again and deal with other parts of the body and the problems that you have. Thank you, Angela, for having me. Thank you. You bet. Thanks.